Um, so, so as I'm reading through the question and saying one or two short things, uh, let me know if there's any specific request. So the first question says, a change in internal energy can be caused by heat transfer, the work done, or a combination of the two. So it's uh, getting at the first law of thermodynamics. Describe and explain how you would distinguish between three cases. Um, yeah, go, it goes to the first law of thermodynamics. So um, uh, work done is probably the easiest one because in our context, uh, whenever there's work done, so we have this derivation of expression of work done for um, a system of gas where work could total or infinitesimal work done is given by pressure times infinitesimal volume change. So if you want total work done, you integrate over. So whenever you have work done, you have a change of volume under some kind of pressure. So that's a good starting place. And change in internal energy itself can be figured out through like change in temperature. And once you have those two pieces of information, then the first law uh, gets you, gives you a way to look at, uh, calculate, and maybe figure out how much heat was transferred. That's sort of what the question gets at. Question two, um, is it possible for the temperature of a system to remain constant when heat flows into or out of it? Yes, it is possible. I'll leave it up to you to find the examples. Um, a great deal of effort, time, money has been spent. Oh, yeah, purchase uh, money. Uh, explain just the first law of thermodynamics why or why not such a machine is like. So it is not likely because, um, I mean, so if uh, so energy is conserved. So just uh, based on first law of thermodynamics, um, so it certainly would not. Uh, produce more energy than it consumes. Uh, the, the, within the limitation of first law of thermodynamics, the most it can do is take in some energy, maybe in the form of heat energy, and turn all of it into mechanical useful work. Uh, that would be possible within the restrictions of first law of thermodynamics, but it couldn't produce more than that. Energy is conserved. And then later on, we'll talk about second law of thermodynamics, which says that even this uh, uh, depressing scenario is actually not possible. Um, but goes to uh, this goes to conservation of energy, uh, and many different schemes for perpetual motion machine requires violation of conservation of energy, which even first law prohibits. Question for describing thermodynamic processes: the four named processes are. Iso, what do I want to start with? Let me start with the isothermal. Isothermal, adiabatic, uh, isobaric, and uh, the last one, sometimes you will hear it as isovolumetric. The term I prefer is isochoric. It's a nice, beautiful Greek word, <laughs> and just keep it Greek. Don't mix Greek and Latin. It's ugly thing to do. Um, and so those are the four named processes. Iso means the same. So, you know, isothermal, it keeps the temperature the way. Let me not give away the whole answer. You look it up. <laughs> those are the four named processes. And uh, they will restrict some, uh, they will put some kind of restriction on some of the thermodynamic quantities. That's how they are useful. And um, this sense, uh, let me leave that for you to answer. Uh, <laughs> when describing heat capacity of a gas, the condensed heat gas, you know, constant volume and constant is different specifically. Um, uh, so I encourage you to read the derivation of these uh, heat capacities in the textbook. Um, if I would give you one word hint, it or two word hint, it's work done. That's the one difference between constant volume process where no work is done and constant pressure process where some work is done. Um, yeah, expand on that for full answer. Uh, name three differences uh, between isothermal expansion and non adiabatic expansion. Oh, that's. Yeah, I think uh, the main thing I want you to get out of this, so, you know, you should find the three differences. The main thing, uh, main misconception I want you to address with this question was sometimes when people hear 
isothermal, they think of like thermos, isolated, no heat transfer. That's what people think about. That's not isothermal. That's adiabatic. <laughs> adiabatic process is the one that uh, doesn't allow for heat transfer, either through thermal isolation or through really quickly occurring process. And um, so th that's the main piece of misconception I want you to get at. <laughs> so that if people say, oh, isothermal is the process where it's a close to, well, it's an isolated system with no heat transfer, then I know <laughs> that uh, you are talking about adiabatic, not isothermal. Um, and um, yeah, this, so the rest, uh, it, this, uh, you know, definition of terms are, um, it's uh, good to have a solid foundation on how you understand these technical terms. So, um, so look it up yourselves and <laughs> find those three differences. But one difference that I cared about is how people understand that adiabatic means zero heat transfer. And isothermal means uh, no change of temperature. And sometimes in order to have that, you actually need to transfer heat so that temperature doesn't change. So I hope that's useful as you are going through. Um, and yeah, so. Um,